Hey my friends, my name is Jocelyn. So hopefully you watched my first intro video on what all of this information is going to be about. This very first video is going to be about quantum physics and how it has anything to do with law of attraction. What are the similarities between the two? So we're going to be going over a bunch of information in this video, mainly on um, some popular experiments that have been done and the most popular studies or, you know, we'll be going over a little bit of definitions and things like that of what quantum entities do down at that quantum level. And then relating it, of course, to why we experience pain, why our society is structured in the very specific way it is. So that's what we're going to be going over today. Okay. So the important thing to realize about quantum physics, a lot of people have just passed it off as philosophy. It is science. It is literally the foundational building blocks of the universe and not just the universe of humans, of us, me and you. An average human is made up of about seven times 10 to the 27th atoms. To put that into perspective, that is seven with 27 zeros behind it. So that's a lot of atoms, okay? And that's just on average. That can be, you know, more or less depending on weight, height, all that good stuff, okay? So keep those things in mind as we go throughout the information. Now, one important thing that I want you to realize about quantum physics, it's literally the reason why we're so advanced today where we're at technologically. It's the reason why you can watch me on this video right now on your phone or your laptop or whatever you're watching me on. It's why we are so advanced in this day and age, okay? It's why we have lasers. It's why we have x-rays. It's literally the foundational building blocks of the universe. So hopefully you really get that picture that it's not just philosophy. The only reason it's really truly been passed off as philosophy is because the small brains of humans can't completely comprehend and answer every single question that is unanswered in quantum physics. There's so many unanswered questions that leave physicists completely baffled. So that's what we're going to be going over with this whole channel. All this information is actually how all this information can complete those answers to quantum physics. Okay. So the other important thing about quantum physics is that it is the core foundation, everything to organic chemistry, to biology, and I would even say psychology because down at that level, even of brain chemicals and things like that that we all have as humans is molecules and atoms. So let's talk about kind of that evolutionary process that we know of, you know, let's go back to the information that we learned back in elementary or junior high and we thought we'd never need, but it turns out it's super important. So we know an atom. Now an atom, atoms come together and they create molecules and then molecules come together and they create cells and cells come together and they create organs and tissues, which of course come together and create a human like you or I, okay? So we all understand that kind of evolutionary process to creating a human being. Now, so let's talk about the atom, okay? Let's start with there before we dive into some of the popular experiments and things like that that I'm gonna be going over. An atom, we all kind of are aware of that basic structure, okay? That really popular image that's of an atom. So we know that an atom has a nucleus, with protons, protons have a positive charge, neutrons have a neutral charge. And then we've got these electrons that orbit around the nucleus. Now, the really important thing that I want you to realize, these, these electrons with their negative charge, they're really fascinating little quantum entities. And I know there's this popular image where the electron orbits in these very specific rings around the nucleus. That is not completely accurate. The accurate thing is that there's more like this cloud of energy that's around the nucleus and we can only really make a probability of where the electron is orbiting around the nucleus because this electron again is so fascinating it can do all of these really fascinating things with its abilities so keep that in mind okay but one important thing to know about the electron as well is the way that it gets its energy is it absorbs photons of light from its outside environment. Now, 
there's a multitude of ways that it can get these photons of light. Now, we know that there are photons of light that come from the sun, from other humans. Pretty much anything that's emitting a warm temperature is going to be emitting these photons of light into the outside environment, like you or I. We're constantly emitting photons of light. Our bodies are made, up, are made up of heat. So we're going to be absorbing and admitting these photons of light kind of on a constant basis, okay? So the way that an electron gains its energy is like I said, it will, an absor it will absorb a photon of light and then it will move up in orbit around the nucleus. Now the way that it will go back down in orbit is it will emit out photons of light and they will show up as a specific color and then it will go back down in its orbit. So that's kind of the, the rotation that it goes through is it absorbs these photons of light and it gains energy and moves up in orbit and then it goes back down in orbit and it's emitting out this energy, okay? To put it in kind of a general way. Now this is also not to dive too much into chemistry but this is also how the periodic table of elements is arranged. It's how we can specifically tell what an element or an, a molecule is, is by the specific colors of light that's being emitted from an atom or a molecule, okay? The periodic table of elements is ordered in how many rings of orbit are around the nucleus and how many specific protons, neutrons, and electrons are in each element. So put that to the side though but it's kind of good to know in a way so that you understand the basics of even a human body okay so let's go into the next part okay let's talk about some really popular like definitions in quantum physics first of all so we know that basic structure of an atom so the first thing I want to talk about is what's called superposition Now, superposition is where an atom or a quantum entity can be in multiple shapes and occupy multiple spaces at the same exact time. Now, this is crazy. This is one of those unanswerable, like, baffling questions that physicists have. Like, how can it do this? There's all these magical things that kind of happen down at this quantum level. So let me explain it in a different way, okay? This is very generally put, this is not an actuality, so kind of bear with me, but this is just to kind of give you a clear picture of what I mean by superposition. So let's take an atom, okay? Now, this atom, when I'm looking at it, it's in the shape of a circle, okay? And it's in one spot, okay? It's only occupying one amount of space. But when I turn away, when my observation is not on this atom, this atom can be a triangle, a square, and a circle at the same time, and it can be sitting here and way over there all at the same time. That's what superposition is. And the really important thing about that is it's based on the observation. It's based on whether I am looking at it or not, okay? So... Keep that in mind, okay? Put that on a shelf in your mind as we go through this information. The next thing I want to talk about is called... Two quantum entities will come into contact or relationship with one another, and then they stay aware of each other's existence. They stay in relationship with each other. And no matter the distance that's between them, they will affect each other's behavior because they came into relationship with one another, okay? So the crazy way to think about that, um, Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. He wasn't really a big fan of this because it was like mind boggling to him. So let's say for instance, I put two electrons, I bring them together, you know, put them in relationship with one another. They've Netflix and chilled, they've held hands, they've fallen in love, okay? So let's say I keep one electron here on Earth and I shoot the other one all the way in the heck out at the moon, okay? What will happen is since these two electrons came into contact with each other and create a relationship with each other, if I spin the one here on Earth in a clockwise direction, it will automatically affect the one on the moon to spin counterclockwise. Boom! 
Like, let that blow your mind for a little bit. Now, the way that I kind of relate this on a human level is we do experience this on a day-to-day basis, you know? We're made up of 7 times 10 to the 27th atoms. So, say for instance, you know, this is really where intuition starts coming in. Like, say you are thinking about a person, someone from your past. And you're thinking about this person and then you look down at your phone and they are freaking calling you right then. It's that your consciousness is is linked to that person since you have come into relationship with them and so you're going to affect each other's behavior okay so this is this is not really that crazy to us spiritual peeps or you know people that are more into law of attraction because we experience this on a day-to-day basis so just kind of sit that on a shelf for a little bit now i'm going to talk about what's called quantum tunneling Now, quantum tunneling is where a quantum entity or anything, it has to be on a very small level, like say an electron or a proton or something. It's where it can force its way through a barrier when it wouldn't, couldn't, or shouldn't normally be able to. Okay, so again, let's relate this on a bigger human level. I I am an X-Men nerd, and I I like to relate it to uh, Kitty who can walk through walls where she she's a human she shouldn't be able to do that but she's able to walk like force her way through that barrier through a wall and get to the other side that literally happens down at the quantum level now on a more like scientific factual basis this actually happens constantly with the sun with the sunlight forcing its way through the atmosphere through that barrier that's how that the photons of light and the sunlight get to us humans and the planets around us and to our earth is through quantum tunneling. Now quantum tunneling also, like it doesn't happen when as an organism gets bigger or even with bigger molecules, you know, I, it, I think that I believe it was Philip Ball that said that even a hydrogen atom, which consists of only one proton, one neutron, one electron, even would have a little bit of difficulty forcing its way through a barrier and doing quantum tunneling because as an organism gets bigger, as a molecule gets bigger, then it's going to be more difficult for it to be able to quantum tunnel, okay? So keep that in mind. So now that we kind of know those basics, those are the three things that I wanted to go over before we talk about the most popular experiment, I would say, in quantum physics, okay? And it's called the double slit experiment. This is going to prove how much our observation really does affect things on a quantum level, how much it affects us down at that quantum level. Our, our observation or our consciousness literally affects the behavior of quantum entities, protons, neutrons, electrons, it affects them completely. So that's what I'm going to be going over with this experiment. So this experiment was done to pretty much study the behavior of electrons. Now what happened is, they wanted to study and see, they were starting to see some different behavior in the electrons because they saw that it was able to act like a particle or a wave. So what they did was, I want you to imagine a bowling ball down a bowling lane, okay? Now, a bowling ball is going to represent a particle and a particle can only occupy one amount of space at a time. Say, that bowling ball, nothing else could occupy that space because that bowling ball has already taken up that amount of space. So say that you roll a bowling ball down a bowling lane. What they did for this experiment was they set up a wall in between the lane that had two slits in the middle. And then they had a back wall at the very end of the lane that would kind of be their marker or that indicator of where the ball would land along that lane. Now, obviously, when you would roll a bowling ball down a bowling lane, if it would land between that slit, then obviously it would land on the back wall right behind that slit, or maybe a little bit of an angle if it's hitting the angle of the slit in the wall. But the crazy thing that they were finding, so they did this experiment with electrons. Now, an electron, they took a little electron gun, and they shot this electron at the double slit wall. And what they were finding was, when they were observing it, it would act just like that bowling ball. It would land directly behind the slit in the wall, and it would behave like a particle would. But, 
what they found, the crazy thing that they found was the second that they would look away or when anyone's observation wasn't conflicting with the electron, when they would literally walk away and weren't watching the electron's behavior, that electron would act like a wave. It would kind of hit these double slits in the wall and then it would split into two waves and it would have all these different indicating markers on that very back wall. And if you even Google that, you can see all, you know, the specific markers and how they would land on that back wall. So this was mind blowing to physicists because what they were finding was that for a long time, they thought the electron only had the ability to act like a particle. It only did one thing and behaved in one specific way. But what they were finding was that the electron or quantum entities actually have the ability to act like a particle or a wave. Now that is huge in, in physics, in quantum physics and everything. So what does this have to do with anything? What does quantum physics have to do with all the information that I'm going to be going over? The most popular thing that they found was that um, there was a man named Roger Penrose who in the 70s, he was a, a famous cosmologist and mathematician and he had a lot of credibility. So when he came out and said that consciousness actually is affecting the behavior of quantum entities and quantum, you know, behavior, this was huge. This was really the beginning of figuring out that our observation is actually affecting the behavior of quantum entities. And we're all made up of, of uh, atoms and molecules and such. Okay, so now that we went over all that information, that's kind of your like basics, uh, Jocelyn breakdown of quantum physics 101. So keep following the rest of the videos. I want you to just kind of keep all that information in mind. Hopefully all of it made sense because we're going to keep going along. The next video, we're really going to be talking about like, uh, we're going to be talking about biology because the next kind of stage up in evolution of these atoms that turn into molecules is cells. So we need to understand kind of how the cells, you know, kind of work in the body, all that good stuff. So tune into my next video and I, I want you to just kind of put all this information on the back burner because we're going to kind of spin back around to all this information to quantum physics as we go throughout the videos, okay? But just kind of keep it in mind so that you can understand the rest of the information as we go along. I really hope you guys enjoyed the information and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Take care.